Now, this was something that I really, really needed because I'm always doing animals or birds. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is exactly what I wanted. Today, I just want to show you some amazing thing, and that is to mask out fur, which is the hardest thing in Affinity Photo. This is what this live session is going to be about. So I want to get rid of your frustration and time wasting with masking fur once and for all, because I know how super frustrating it can be to actually mask out fur. And in this live session, I want to show you guys the best technique and tools to mask out fur that will always work. So no matter what the background is, and this is the image that I'm actually going to show you so you see this line with this very yeah, difficult background to cut out and i will show you that you can actually get results like this so very very clean cutouts now i will show you why it is so hard to perfectly select and mask out fur and how these tools that i will show you and that i'm launching right now are actually going to change the game forever so the problem is that selecting fur is the hardest and it will 99 percent of the time will give you bad results sometimes it's going to give you a good result and that is for instance with an image like this and i will show you the result afterwards but most times if you have an image something like this which we most often have the result looks yeah just terrible like i actually did this with my refine selection and this was the result and we are gonna get to this result which is a lot cleaner and a lot better so yeah it's pretty impressive what these brushes can do now this is especially frustrating if you like me love adding animals to your edits i've been creating hundreds and hundreds of photo manipulations before and I think around 95% of my edits include animals. So I've been playing and fighting a lot with animal cutouts. So this also for me is actually a game changer. And the reason why this is so hard to get fur right is usually the quality of the image, the colors, the background and the lighting. And there are so many more things. So there's a lot of factors that actually can mess up your cutouts, basically. And today I want to give you the solution. And the solution is going to be available for all members of my free school community. And that is the Pixel Perfect Fur Masks Masterclass. This is going to be the solution. So I've created a brush pack, which you can see right here in the bottom right. So we've got a few fur brushes. And then for one of our members, Ruth, I've created and added some feather brushes uh, to make it also work for bird cutouts, basically. These brushes, I've worked on them for quite a bit, actually. So it took me a few weeks to create these and to figure out the best way how I could create these brushes so that they would actually work. And the best thing is that they also work without a pen tablet. So you don't really need a pen tablet. You can actually do it with a mouse or with a trackpad of your laptop or any other thing that you use maybe a roller ball mouse or whatever this will actually work first who am i if you don't know me i'm renz or maybe you know me as i'm renzi i've been using affinity photo since 2019 i fell in love with photo manipulation first posted it on instagram a few works and then some people asked me like how do you actually create these images so then i started my youtube channel it was quite in the beginning of affinity photo so there weren't too many people creating tutorials back then but now my youtube channel just reached 14,000 subscribers, which is super amazing. And it's growing quite rapidly. And next to my YouTube channel, I actually created the I'm Renzi Academy. And the I'm Renzi Academy was to host my courses and my workshops. Now there was a problem with the I'm Renzi Academy and the Facebook group. And that was that it was just a place to host my courses, but there was no live interaction or anything. And with the Facebook group, there was very low engagement. So I ultimately switched to school that I did uh, a few weeks ago, I think about two weeks ago. And currently we have over 400 members, so 418 to be exact. It is a super active community where people are super supportive or members really support each other. Everybody can show their work and can create and share, ask their questions, etc. So the tools and the solutions that I'm going to offer you are only available to members of my free school community. So if you are, haven't joined yet, then yeah, you'll find the link somewhere around this video where you can join. And inside of the free school community, I will be hosting my courses, challenges. We're going to do live sessions and we do actually weekly live sessions just to hang out, but also creative live sessions like these. So if you haven't joined yet, make sure to do that right now. But enough about me. Let me actually show you when it is easy to make selections or first selections 
and what actually makes it easy. And then I'm going to show you what makes it so difficult and why it is so frustrating for most of us. Now, this is example number one and just found this image on unsplash.com. And I will just use my quick selection brush and my trackpad, so no pen tablet, to make a selection out of this tiger. Now, the reason why this is going to be super easy for Affinity Photo is because the background is very, very different from the subject, basically. So we've got a white and bright subject and we've got a very dark background. So I'm just going to make a quick selection of this tiger. Uh, you can check your selection by pressing Q. So this looks pretty good to me. Well, obviously there is some messy things right here, but we're going to refine it right now. So I'm going to press Q again and I'm going to hit refine at the top right here. And now with my refine brush, I'm just going to brush over the areas that I want Affinity Photo to have a closer look at. And we can do this in parts. So you don't have to do everything at once. But as you will see very soon, Affinity Photo is going to make a super nice and clean selection of this tiger. So you can change the preview here. You can change it to uh, black or to white. It looks best on a black background because the original background was also dark. And you can change the output at the bottom right here. So I'm going to change that to new layer with mask. Hit apply. And now we've got a very clear cutout of our tiger. So just to see it, I'm going to create a black fill layer as a background. And you can see that we've got a super, super nice cutout, including all of these little furry hairs of the tiger. So this is an example where it is actually super easy for Affinity Photo to make a pixel perfect selection. However, if we go to this image, it is going to be way more messy. So I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to grab my selection brush. I'm going to increase the brush size. And let's actually say we want to include the foreground as well, because it's going to be hard to make an exact cutout of the line only. So we're just going to include the foreground as well. And you can already see that Affinity Photo just messes up my selection. And that is mainly because the background is what I call it's a busy background, so it's not very contrasting from the subject. I'm just going to try to make this actually work with my trackpad, so still not using my graphic tablet. And I think this looks kind of okay. So I'm going to press Q again to leave quick mask mode, and I'm going to hit uh, refine. And now I'm going to try the same thing. So I'm just going to brush over the edges to try and make a nice furry selection, basically but I don't want to waste too much time on this because I know that this is simply not going to work as we wanted to. Let's say we tried our best. So let's actually change the overlay to black. And this look, just looks like a total mess. And same, obviously, on a white background. This is just the messiest thing ever. And this is something we can really, really, really not work with. Now, what we would usually do is probably turn this into a layer with a mask. And then we would try to figure out or to correct it with some basic brushes. So with my brush tool selected to kind of make it work. But obviously, this is never going to be like such a nice result. So this just doesn't work. And now I will actually show you my solution for this. And it is highly requested by two of my members, especially <laughs> Sarah and Ruth. And let me actually show you how this is going to work. So I'm going to create a duplicate first so that we got our original right here. I'm just going to do the same with my quick selection brush. And I'm just going to make this same kind of selection. So let's do that first. And what I want to do now is I want to stay inside of my line. And I can actually also do this without a quick selection brush, just with a lasso tool or anything. And this looks pretty good. We're kind of inside of my shape. This looks fine. And we're just going to use this for now. So I'm going to press Q again, and I'm going to hit the mask icon. Now, obviously, this looks terrible, but we can fix this with our fur brushes. So I'm going to go to my fur brushes. And there are a couple right here. So the first three are actually separate hair strains, basically. So let me show you with black. This is fur brush number one. This is fur brush number two. And obviously, you can increase the brush size. And I will show you exactly how these are all going to work out. And this is fur brush number three. And then we've got a couple of other fur brushes, which are very, very interesting. And these are going to change the game. That is this one. This is a left little fur thingy, a right little fur thingy, then kind of a yeah, different shape fur thingy. And then we've got a few fur balls. And these fur balls are actually super, super cool to use. And then I've got this other fur ball thing as well. Now, let me show you what we can actually do with these fur balls. So if I select my fur ball and I go into my mask of my lion, I select white as a foreground and I'm going to turn this thing around. 
I can actually just create like super clean, a super clean edge of my lion hair basically. And you want to rotate your brush with the uh, left and right arrow keys and you want to use the right brush size as well. So with the left and the right bracket key, you can increase and decrease your brush size. And so we can use these brushes to make these very nice furry textures. Now, let me actually see, show you what you can do with these fur balls. So if I select black as a foreground color, which means I'm subtracting from my mask, and let me zoom in a little bit, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. You can see that once I brush over it, I get, I get rid of this harsh edge. And that is kind of important to make this work as perfectly as I showed you in the introduction video. So with this fur brush, you can either subtract from your selection or from your mask, but you can also, if you select white and you make it a lot bigger, you can actually get things back. And that is how to make super, super clean, furry textures with these brushes. These are the best brushes for me to start off with. Usually I start off with these fur balls and that is to get rid of this harsh edge. So you can see I've got this re really weird harsh edge right here. So I'm just gonna brush it out. And you can either do it with these fur balls or you can do it with these things as well. That works just the same. So you can rotate your brush a little bit and just get rid of these hard edges. And afterwards you can use these fur brushes and you can recreate this fur texture. And the best result is when you actually change your brush size a lot and also rotate your brush whenever necessary. So I can just zoom in a little bit and click and drag if I want to. And right here as well, we can also use this brush for the top right here if we want to get more dense fur basically. And this is also where these other hair strains come in handy because sometimes you want to have like more hairy texture. And the great thing about these fur strains is that they move along with your cursor. So if I start here and I move up and move to the right, you can actually see that it moves with my cursor and you can still rotate your brush. So I can still rotate it with the left arrow key and still use it in a different direction, basically. But this is just super awesome. So if I rotate it back to kind of normal, I'm not sure this looks pretty good. I'm gonna make it quite big and I'm just gonna brush around this edge. And this actually gives you these very nice, loose texture, basically. You can, as mentioned, you can do the same with these fur balls. So you can just click once here and there to get these nice fur textures. And for these, you want to uh, keep in mind the direction of the hair. So you can see that for his manes right here, the direction is going downward. So if I rotate this brush down and then start creating my brush strokes, it actually looks most realistic because it wouldn't make sense if I use this brush and the hairs go up and I would create it like this. Usually you want to follow the original hair for your subject. So like this. Rotate it down, sometimes make it bigger because down here it's still a mess. So let's actually fix this little bit and let's actually fix it with maybe, I don't know, maybe with this one. I'm just going to press X because I want my brush to be black and I'm just going to brush over it like this. So we get rid of this hard edge. And now we're going to use the right brush, which is this one. I'm going to press X on the keyboard to make it white. And now I'm just going to click a few times here and there to get this nice hair texture. Maybe make it a lot bigger because these hairs seem to be quite long. Something like this. And that looks pretty good. So let's actually go to the back right here. I see that we can go a little higher with these hairs. So let's actually do that. And I missed a little bit around this area as well. So we can actually just recreate the real image, which is pretty nice because yeah, Affinity Photo offers a live preview of your brushes. So when you hover over it, you can actually see where the original hairs are. And this I messed up quite a bit as well, but usually I don't really need fur brushes for this, but I could use them if I wanted to. So I can actually use black as a foreground color to get rid of this hard edge like so and now i'm just gonna um, switch to white again and just brush over this edge so we get a little bit of fur texture if you don't want it obviously you can just use any regular brush so any basic brush but i think it just looks 
Yeah, it's okay. It's not too bad. So this is how these fur brushes actually work. So I can show you the before and after, obviously, now. So this is the before, um, yeah, which is a really difficult background. And then this is the after, and you can actually see all of these hair textures and all of these furry, fuzzy textures. And once again, I'm not even doing this with my pen tablet. I'm doing this with my trackpad. So this is almost stupidly easy to get super crystal clear cutouts. It costs a bit of time obviously, but the result is just mind-blowing in my opinion. And I've actually added a few more brushes. I haven't really found like the best use case for them, but I'm sure they will be very useful. And that is a few feather brushes as well. Four feather brushes, so different feathers. So if you want to mask out birds or any other animal with feathers, you can use these. And then the last two are actually just the tip of the feather. So if you want to get feather texture, you can actually click and hold and you can brush and you get a very, very nice and subtle feather texture as well as for the left side, because yeah, obviously the right brush doesn't work on the left side because of the curve. So I actually mirrored the brush and I've added this one to the brush pack as well. So these are the feather brushes and the fur brushes. And if you really want to go next level, you can get the ultimate brush bundle as well. And included in the ultimate brush bundle are grass brushes. So that would be perfect for this little bit right here. Add some texture to these grass blades right here if we want to. But obviously, this is not why you're here. You're just here for the fur. So... That is basically it. And these fur brushes are from now on. Let me actually show you. I'm going to put it live right now. So we've got this course right here in the classroom. Masking fur made easy. Pixel perfect fur mask. 100% guaranteed. And I'm actually going to publish it right now. They're going to be $27. And that is because there's st still no lessons or anything like it inside of there yet. And it will actually go up once I've added other content to this pixel perfect fur mask course. Keep in mind... These brushes, they are, they are only available for members of the Affinity Photo Creative School community. And this community is completely free. It is absolutely free. We're going live every week. We're doing challenges right now. Currently, we were running a, a July challenge um, with the theme of sci-fi. So if you want to uh, participate in this challenge, you can actually join if you join the Affinity Photo School community. And I hope you have a lot of fun with masking out fur and with your amazing new fur brushes. I see some thumbs up. This is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I use all your other brushes, but now this was something that I really, really needed because I'm always doing animals or birds. Yeah. And I've had the exact same problem. So thank you so much. You're welcome. This is Ruth. exactly what I wanted. As soon as this is over, I'm buying. I'm buying and it now. Really Perfect. I think this is just going to be like the easiest ever solution for Absolutely. And, 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 and masks. Well, I'm delighted. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm off. If you don't mind, I want to go and download some brushes. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go get them. Go get them. I have them now, too. Oh, perfect. I love you guys. Thank you so much okay, for your support. So I really much. appreciate it. I really appreciate it.